Joining us from Canada is a familiar face to the Virtual Pipeline Summit, Stephen Coles. Stephen is the president and CEO of Hi-Fi Engineering, a fiber optic sensing technology company, partly owned by Enbridge, Synovus, and BDC. Stephen has a strong leadership pedigree, having performed in senior roles with Steeper Energy, Hemisphere GPS, AOL Time Warner Canada, Group Telecom, and Telus Corporation. He has served on several boards, both uh, private, public, and nonprofit, with such organizations as Ventmeter Technologies, SEPA Foundation, and the Fernie Alpine Ski Team, to name but a few. He is a graduate from both the Faculty of Business at the University of Alberta, uh, as well as the Executive Management Program at the University of Western Ontario's Richard Ivey School of Business. Yeah, he also received his ICD designation from the Institute of Corporate Directors. Welcome back to the VPS, Stephen, and please tell us about value-added applications with high-fidelity fiber optic monitoring and machine learning. Thanks, Danny. Really appreciate the intro. Uh, remind me to cut down on my bio for you next time. Uh, it's great to be back at the Virtual Pipeline uh, Summit. Uh, as the uh, intro uh, suggested, we're going to talk uh, about uh, high fidelity fiber optic monitoring and, and the value of high definition data, very consistent with Simon's presentation, but applying that into machine learning on a variety of applications uh, around that. So we'll start a little bit about uh, HiFi and background of our technology uh, and talk a little bit about high fidelity sensing uh, and um, then go into a variety, after we go to uh, approaches to machine learning, We'll uh, go through a variety of application case studies uh, through leak detection and a variety of more operational uh, applications, including evolution to flow monitoring. Uh, a little bit about HiFi, we are a fiber optic sensing technology service provider. Uh, but as uh, Danny mentioned, we are partly owned by Synovus uh, and Enbridge. And as a result, we are completely focused in the oil and gas space, both in downhole applications, but much more importantly, uh, on pipelines where we market our what we call our high fidelity distributed sensing platform or HDS and HDS monitoring control room software uh, as part of uh, pipeline monitoring uh, and solutions. We started off by working on preventative pipeline leak detection and we've expanded that uh, to evolving AI and machine learning approaches to other operational applications that really fit into the digital transformation of, uh, of pipelines. Uh, the challenges that we've set out to help solve are really simple. Uh, it's really about space and time at 100%. Uh, of course, pipeline operators will conventionally use a variety of what we call point sensors, flow meters, mass balance uh, capabilities, uh, microphones, geophones. Uh, they'll also provide a variety of periodic surveys, either inside the pipe, uh, like the past uh, presentation, uh, or, uh, or topside as part of the integrity uh, in inspections. All are great things to be doing, but all run the risk of not being at the exact right place at the exact right time for successful ident uh, identification of uh, various events. And so uh, what we need to do is get to 100% coverage if we're going to get to 100% assurance of, uh, of uh, pipeline safety and, and operational capabilities. So enter the world of fiber optic technology. Uh, listen, if there's anything I hope that you remember from this presentation is that not all fiber optic is actually the same. I'm sure many of you have seen uh, pictures like this uh, at the bottom where we've got uh, wires that look like fishing line that shine various wavelengths of light through. Telecommunications carriers have been using this for 30 or more years to carry vast amounts of data. But different versions of fiber optics can be used in a variety of different specialty applications. Military healthcare have been using this for a long time. And we can also use a specialized version of this optical technology to be designed as a high fidelity or high definition, high definition sensor. Now, what does it sense? You can really think about it simplistically as changes of energy. So it could be uh, thermal energy, so temperature changes uh, down to resolution of 0 0.001 degrees Celsius in real time. Uh, acoustic energy, so sound. Um, essentially being able to, to use the fiber optic sensor as an optical microphone um, uh, across every centimeter of the asset. Uh, or then kinetic energy, uh, vibration and strain, down to resolution of micrometers. Um, but by providing these measurements on a fully distributed basis, again, every centimeter along the pipeline asset, using the speed of light, we can help provide this solution of space and time, and then provide other uh, benefits in terms of providing high quality data uh, to be able to provide other types of applications. 
Just a little bit about how we deploy the technology. It really comes down to three major categories and provide a little description here. It starts with the specialized fiber optic sensor, as I mentioned, designed not for telecommunications, but designed for high fidelity sensing of acoustics, temperature, and vibration and strain. It'll get terminated into system hardware that gets deployed along the right of way of the pipeline, either at uh, pump stations or automated valve huts, facilities where there's good quality power uh, and communications. And there we are processing the light, uh, various wavelengths of light, uh, again, in very high definition and generates quite a bit of data. A 100 kilometer pipeline will generate terabytes of data a day. So we need very advanced big data processing capability and horsepower uh, to computationally process that data. And then finally, we get into the software algorithms. And this is gonna be the bulk of this discussion on using machine learning software capabilities to detect normal from abnormal, um, and then be able to provide information in, uh, in terms of live data feeds and other event identifications into a control room in effectively real time. Now, what's interesting is that the software can be leveraged the same physical sensing infrastructure in terms of cabling and hardware to synthesize that same data set for a variety of discrete different types of applications, not just leak detection. We often uh, get asked, how do we deploy uh, fiber optics uh, with uh, pipeline right-of-ways? There's really three methods that we use. Uh, typically, we are using an electrical conduit. Uh, you'll see this orange uh, electrical conduit and a variety of different uh, uh, images I'll show here. We can either place that on the pipe, uh, which is entirely appropriate if we have a new build or an integrity dig, in other words, with an open trench. Uh, but we don't actually have to be touching the pipe because we have such high fidelity on the sensor. We can just be what we call near the pipe. Uh, which allows us to deploy if there's multiple pipes in the same trench. And it also allows us to retrofit using machines like this one, uh, where we can actually place that same electrical conduit very close to an existing pipeline, say about a meter away, we can still be a very effective sensor. And then finally, leveraging a little bit more of our downhole experience, we can actually go inside the pipeline uh, for short, high consequence areas, maybe a river crossing or environmental zone, again, from a retrofit perspective. Here's just a couple of uh, images to show uh, on the pipe here on the left-hand image. This is actually from the Trans Mountain Expansion Pipeline Project, which is one of the largest construction projects of its kind, over uh, 1,200 kilometers. Um, and Trans Mountain has allowed us to use this, uh, this image. You can see the electrical conduit uh, secured with clips at the 12 o'clock position uh, on the pipe during construction. And on the right-hand side is an example of new construction as well, but where we've got multiple pipes in the trench, and we can actually just deploy the fiber optic sensor near the pipe. Um, and then, as I mentioned, internal deployment, again, part of retrofitting being very, very important where we can take that fiber optic sensor and insert it inside an operating pipeline, uh, either through a, a pig launching station or some 45 degree ingress point using both a tow pig, you can see on the top right hand side of things and an injector system to push and pull uh, the, uh, the fiber optic sensor in cap tube. Uh, now, this allows us to be able to sense from the inside of the pipe with flow um, uh, in motion, as opposed to being on the outside of the pipe. So on to machine learning. Uh, so there's been lots of buzz, of course, around AI machine learning, uh, but many don't necessarily describe what they do, how they support it, and what level. Now, AI is really about creating programs or software capability where we can sense, reason, and act on a set of data and become more efficient in the process of various tasks. Now we're very familiar with what we call weak or narrow AI on a more consumer level. Everyone has Google Home or Alexa where we ask it to play our favorite song uh, or a variety of different tasks. These are really nested if then Boolean analysis. It's very predictable, provides great utility to the consumer, although it is a little bit generic and it doesn't lend itself necessarily well to specialized or more industrial applications. That's where we get into machine learning or stronger AI, where we migrate into the ability to improve performance by dynamically adapting to make potentially different decisions from similar data sets. And that's on a progression to an addition level called deep learning or reinforcement learning. Now, some of the machine learning approaches that can be taken include unsupervised uh, learning, which includes the massive clustering and dimensional reduction of, uh, of data, or um, we can use supervised uh, machine learning, which I like to say is using an answer key because we actually have known inputs and outputs where the rigor is now applied to the classification and a lot of regression analysis for repetitive and high confidence um, of predictability. So at HiFi, with high fidelity optical sensing data, we do use a combination of both. 
Um, so we do use uh, a leak database uh, and non-leak event database that we use a variety of supervised um, machine learning capabilities where we're using things like computational neural networks uh, for support vectoring, which are great for the classification of massive amounts of data in, uh, in real time. And again, we're using a lot of testing and training on this. But we also use um, other unsupervised uh, machine learning approaches like function fitting, which is a way to predict, uh, fit a predictive formula, formula into a set of data uh, to analyze something in the future, such as something like flow. And again, we use a lot of repetitive uh, clustering of data as part of this approach. So in terms of moving into some of the application case studies of using uh, machine learning, we can start with leak detection, uh, where we're actually leveraging, again, a combination of acoustics temperature, vibration, and strain to be able to highlight uh, with high confidence uh, true positive events like a leak. And in this case, we can actually see a rupture where we have significantly saturated uh, acoustics. At the same time, we have a massive strain on the pipe, essentially the pipe under pressure. Uh, when a leak occurs, the pipe moves in the opposite direction to counterbalance that. And, and often with liquids, we'll get a negative pressure wave that we can detect uh, as well. Again, applying this into a machine learning uh, database, relatively easy to uh, showcase that we have a rupture in this specific uh, uh, approach, but it might not be that easy. This is actually a field example that we have in West Texas, uh, where we have a lot of activity, uh, vehicles, pump jacks. We actually have an intersecting pipeline that's flowing across of our pipeline. And if we were just using maybe acoustics only or temperature only, we may actually miss this very small leak that the pipeline operator, in this case, ExxonMobil, uh, simulated. Um, and we could very much either miss a true positive or create a false negative uh, as a result of acoustic only sensing. But by leveraging machine learning and understanding the database that we're drawing upon, we can correlate this acoustic issue uh, or anomaly, I should say, with strain on the pipe on a couple of challenge channels to be able to say that we have a valid, in this case, pinhole leak. But because leaks happen so infrequently, we also wanna focus on other preventative leak related applications and other applica uh, operational uh, type of uh, applications that help uh, increase the paybacks uh, from a technology deployment perspective. Examples like this are security intrusions. We can draw upon a variety of databases and machine learning to be able to detect machinery that's digging too close to the pipeline, alert the control room very, um, very much in real time, provide them audio files to be able to listen to uh, the actual, in this case, machine. And not just because the acoustics are loud, but because we're able to detect various frequencies of machinery, harmonics, et cetera. They're able to leverage that machine learning uh, signature database and, uh, and library. Uh, we can also focus on other more geotechnical activities that are really focusing on strain, which has really become more and more an important part of our business in providing value back to pipeline operators. So geotechnical monitoring, including earthquakes, landslides, slope stability, uh, we've actually detected thousands, sorry, uh, earthquakes from thousands of kilometers away from actual pipeline deployment could be still tracked for pipeline integrity management purposes. You can see an example here where we detected an earthquake about 300 kilometers away. This was rated at 5.2 on the Richter scale. We were able to detect the earthquake event itself and an aftershock that allowed the pipeline operator in this case, uh, in this case to do a preventative shutdown. We can also provide, uh, you know, again, machine learning against things like strain monitoring on a cumulative basis. This is an example where we have a pipeline operator with an expansion loop due to heated product. You can actually see, again, that orange conduit deployed on this expansion loop. What we can actually do is take high definition data from our high fidelity sensor and be able to use machine learning algorithms to understand what we expect is normal strain dynamically across every segment or channel of the pipeline. See this graph here, we have distance of a pipeline, days of a month, um, and then strain magnitude. The red line is predicted from machine learning to under to be able to estimate what the normal amount of strain is exhibited on a monthly basis over uh, this pipeline by segment. And it's got two expansion loops in the middle and, and towards the end. You can actually see then the data is showcasing, for the most part, we have normal cumulative strain around the operation of this pipeline, except for the back half of this month at the section second expansion loop where we're able to leverage that machine learning capability and provide this alarm condition to the pipeline integrity managers to be able to understand what's going on specifically with that expansion loop. Another great example of image processing that uses supervised machine learning is what we call train identification. 
um, where actually you're seeing a great example here where the pink line is an output from the machine learning algorithm that is looking for a train in terms of typical speed um, and, uh, and duration. The red is actually the, the data coming through from a real train crossing, uh, crossing our right of way. Now, why am I showing this to you? Pipeline operators know that trains go back and forth along the right of way. That's not uh, abnormal. What we're doing here is that we can actually then suppress this data from other algorithms like leak detection algorithms, almost like noise canceling headphones. So we were not creating any risks of false positive type of alerts, like a leak alarm, just because something loud and vibrated uh, went uh, across our right of way. Other operational examples are pig detection, tracking, and analysis, where we can detect pigs as they travel through the pipeline, as they scrape through the well joints. We can actually uh, detect where the pig is, if there's any sort of anomalies, uh, either a change in speed, we can show slowdowns, even stoppages. We can provide then as alerts and tracking through our control room interface and use that same level of information coming off the fiber optic sensor uh, that uh, we can actually then provide a variety of levels of, of distributed analysis, whether it be total strain, unique strain locations, uh, uh, sequential time duration of each of the different pig runs to provide additional analysis back to the pipeline operator. We actually have uh, some operators are using this for even things like ovality testing uh, for, uh, for pipelines that have been deployed. And then finally, evolve this to a potential opportunity we call flow monitoring, which is a really good example of function fitting based unsupervised machine learning, where we can actually use what we call an energy propagation algorithm constructed from acoustic and vibration data to estimate what the flow is on a specific pipeline on a distributed basis rather than a point sensor basis. This is an example where we've got these set point changes in blue on the left uh, that comes directly from uh, uh, the SCADA system of the operator. And on the right hand side, we have a green graph showing the estimation of flow using the distributed fiber optic sensor. And if we plot these two together, you can see we almost have a perfect correlation between the two of them. There's a really another great example of data that's generated by the system that was first designed for leak detection, but now can provide other value added applications over and above by using the exact same infrastructure and the exact same uh, data. Uh, now, this is not a commercial uh, application like we have on the pig management application that I showed you before. Uh, we do have a patent on this and we are working to further commercialize this as we speak. Uh, I mentioned a few times our control room interface. This is just a few illustrations of the graphical interface uh, that we've designed to be able to provide event information uh, at detail, uh, real live data streams, uh, 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 dashboard uh, capabilities for system health and a variety of other applications that we can push to given it is a web-based uh, system. So in summary, Distributed fiber optic sensing in very high fidelity and high definition data and machine learning can be really effectively used for things like preventative pipeline leak detection, but we can provide those for other applications as well, whether it be more integrity management oriented like pig detection, tracking and analysis, and even evolving that into other applications uh, such as uh, flow sensing on a fully distributed basis. We can also use as an important element of uh, environmental, social and governance strategies or ESG, where scorecard improvements and data from the system can be used by pipeline moder operators and to can say, uh, uh, stay consistent with standards such as um, uh, API 1175. Really, we're talking about strengthening the business case and the investment in the technology for a variety of applications to be supported. We actually do see a day where deployment of the technology is justified on an operational based set of applications Oh, and by the way, it also does uh, leak detection. I uh, just wanted to finish with an acknowledgement of uh, an illustration of some of the partners that we work with. Obviously, they range from predominantly oil and gas based pipeline operators, but also include a variety of non hydrocarbon based pipeline operators in, uh, in mining and water utilities as well. So with that, I think I went a couple more minutes over uh, my 50 minute uh, allotment, uh, but want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'll turn it back over to Danny for any questions that might might have. If we run out of time for a Q&A, uh, please feel free to contact me at the information listed on this slide. Thank you very much. Stephen, thank you so much for an excellent presentation and, and no worry about going over. It was uh, excellent content, so I'm, I'm glad that you kept going. Uh, wonderful to see how you can monitor the health of the pipeline so accurately uh, by by using multiple measurements um, and continually. That, that's really fantastic. There, there's been a lot of interest um, in in and engagement from the audience. So I, I wanted to pull up on one point from uh, William Brown at Baker Hughes and also Stephen, uh, sorry, uh, Aberdeen, 
Said from uh, from my alma alma mater at Aberdeen University, <laughs> uh, and they're they're questioning about the application of uh, the fiber optic being placed inside the inside the pipeline. Does that interfere with with pigging? That's a great question. Uh, so depending on the product type, uh, so from a gas environment, we've had lots of experience where uh, the internally deployed sensors can stay there for a very long period of time, particularly because inline inspection tools are probably not run that often. Um, and so we do have a retraction a reinsertion procedure. Uh, it takes about an hour or two, depending on the distance of uh, the pipeline. Typically, we're deploying these on short, high consequence areas, say river crossings or environmental zones. It might be maybe two to 4,000 meters kind of in length. Uh, so we can retract and redeploy. Now, on the liquid side, especially where I live in, uh, in Alberta, on the heavy oil side of things, of course, cleaning pigs are used quite a bit more actively uh, than inline inspection tools. We are working with uh, a variety of uh, um, potential opportunities in testing the ability to coexist. In other words, keep that fiber optic sensor in place, maybe have a custom design pig, maybe an octagonal type of design, where instead of that cleaning pig is squeezing the capillary tube into the inside diameter of the pipe, it actually could hug it and spin around it. Um, so a little bit more testing to do on that. I appreciate that as one of the uh, billion dollar questions that we get on internal deployment. Um, it does leverage a lot of our downhole experience and uh, we've had great success on it on the gas side and as well as uh, water utilities as well. That's really interesting. How, how long does it take to retract and, and redeploy? Uh, well, the retraction takes about an hour um, and then wow. the, the, the insertion, you know, we try to keep it as slow and steady as possible. Uh, really comes down to that we're using the flow of the pipeline with that tow pig to pull that fiber optic sensor into place. But, uh, you know, if we're moving there at a couple meters per second, we can get a 2,000 to 4,000 meter section done uh, relatively easily. Fantastic. And um, if the fiber optic is, um, if it's deployed internally, what, what's the service life of that? That question comes from Louis at uh, Kenya Pipeline Company. Well, the fiber optic sensor itself is designed to have a 25, 30 year lifespan. Um, now, care and attention has to be provided, obviously, as we're spooling that in and out. Um, it is uh, optical technology and uh, we want to treat that with, uh, with kid gloves, so to speak. Uh, but if done properly from a procedural perspective, uh, that fiber optic sensor can be inserted, retracted, reinserted multiple times and, uh, and live a long, useful life. Fantastic. And for when when the cable is, um, in fact, sorry, I'll, I'll stick on on internal just just for a sec. No problem. Um, you, you you mentioned that um, it can be deployed internally and, and retrofitted in, in existing lines. Are, are you seeing much um, take up from from pipeline operators on that? Yeah, actually. So we we've done quite a bit of internal deployments uh, over the past few years. We're now starting to see more the interest in the external. Uh, retrofitting. So I had that image there of that uh, uh, trenching machine. These the, the advancements in GPS technology and inertial sensing and even you know things like ground penetrating radar to be able to tee up off of the as-built records of that pipeline. Uh, we've actually done some deployments quite recently uh, where using that very high accuracy machine can place that electrical conduit at a precise position, uh, say one meter away from the pipe at say the two or three o'clock position. That is a perfect retrofit for us uh, because we have such high fidelity on the sensing, even being a meter away from the pipe, we can still be an effective sensor for leak detection through flow monitoring um, type of applications. And so we're getting a lot of attention to that. We probably have about two, over 200 kilometers of projects uh, in planning mode over the next uh, year or so. Fantastic. And that, that leads nicely on for me to ask about the, the near pipe application. Can you distinguish between different pipes if there's a couple of pipes there? Uh, depends uh, on every environment is uh, is a little bit different. Uh, we definitely ha we have deployments where we have uh, multiple pipes, not just two, uh, in the same right of way, uh, where we've used sort of multiple sensors, um, kind of on a left to right basis. So maybe you know in between every odd pipe, as an example. And we've got multiple sensors. We can detect if there's an event, a leak, maybe the worst case example, but if there was a leak on the pipe that was the furthest to the right, we'd be able to be able to provide that directionality. Having a single sensor down the middle of each pipe is very difficult to distinguish which pipe might have an event like a leak. In that specific image example that I, uh, uh, that I used, that pipeline operator 
uh, you know, came to terms with, well, I could put individual fibers on individual pipes and know for sure, or if I go down the middle, it's much more economical. And from a procedural perspective, if a leak alarm actually occurs, I'm just going to shut down both pipes anyway. Probably sensible. That's really cool. Thanks for that. Um, there's a question from Loreto at Antofagasta Minerals. Um, do you have experience detecting leaks on copper concentrate pipelines or in copper mining industry? Maybe that's one you want to take up uh, separately after after the, the seminar. I, I can say that we, are, I mean, as a fiber optic sensor, we are really agnostic to the product type. Uh, we can be deployed on any, we're also pipe agnostic. We can be deployed on uh, carbon steel, uh, flexible pipes, uh, composites, but also we've done, uh, you know, liquids, bitumen, uh, gas, multi-phase. We've done water, uh, produced water as well as potable water. And we have done things like acid slurry pipelines in, in, uh, in mining. So um, it really comes down to we're able to sense changes of energy from the flow of a product in, under pressure in a tubular. And so in the, the, the copper example, uh, high confidence that we would actually be able to provide that same utility uh, using the same approaches that we have with other uh, slurry-based pipelines uh, as well. But uh, uh, feel free to reach out to me on, my, uh, on the email that I left there and uh, happy to discuss further. Perfect. One final question before I let you go there, Stephen. It's uh, again from Aberdeen, uh, Aberdeen, here in Aberdeen. And um, for cross-country pipelines, expanding over hundreds of kilometers, how can we identify noise or false alarms, especially in areas where, uh, where theft is common? It's a great question. So independent if we're talking about something short or something long, um, the first thing that the system does from a machine learning perspective uh, after the physical deployment is learn the baseline or what is normal about this uh, operating pipeline. That is, number one, something that needs to be dynamically characterized, literally every segment of, uh, of the pipeline, every 10 meters or so, because uh, as the uh, uh, person with the question is probably alluding to, you know, a pipeline going through a farmer's field versus crossing an interstate highway or a rail crossing are to be completely different environments. Normal is different between those different segments. So you need to dynamically characterize that so that when you're running machine learning algorithms to determine normal from abnormal, they're running off a different baseline for that specific segment of, uh, of, um, of pipe. The other comment I'll make is that process of baseline never actually gets to 100%, right? So there's always machine learning algorithms that are continuously learning what is normal about this pipe. That might be turbulent flow from a different batch. It might be a different type of uh, uh, pig that we've not seen before. And that's an ongoing uh, process that really never ends, that baselining process that we use machine learning to be able to uh, support. Sure. And, and the more uh, applications you have, the, the more refinement you can do to your models. That's clear. Precisely. Perfect. Thank you very much again, Stephen. Thanks, Danny.